So I know that the nature he's trying to convey, he's trying to um, get us to adopt and embrace, is this nature of anti-elitism, which is a belief in egalitarianism, equality from birth, okay? Prosperity is a birthright. You understand that since this planet belongs to God, this is all logical, it's intellectual, uh, then it rightfully belongs to all of us. You understand? You get a cut from birth. So that settles the score right there. If we were all given our shares in the oil and gold and silver and timber and agriculture and fishing and on and on and on, okay, of just the natural resources that God provided, okay, that God provided to this planet, to us, his children, to share and to use as we see fit without wrecking the planet. And indeed, it is written in Scripture that... Um, I actually found it in Revelation where it's written that, you know, those that destroy the earth, the Lord will destroy them. So I'm a big pro environmental proponent, okay? But we need to have discussions. When I got to listen to Al Gore, okay, when he's got a huge carbon footprint, you know, I got to listen to him tell me how bad I am for having any carbon footprint at all without being willing to discuss planned obsolescence and disruptive technology. I'm, I'm sorry, but, I you know, I, I'm a little paranoid of a guy like that. I don't trust people because you know they're smart i mean you know that he's well educated and he talks to a lot of hoity-toity people and you know intellectual you know a lot maybe it's a lot of pseudo intellectuals but you see this is where you know i don't know if somebody's being a phony if they're lying or if they're just deceived deluded i you see i don't want to be anybody's judge so i just kind of let it go and, and just let it leave it in god's hands and if that day comes when i got a judge well i mean i don't know i'll do what i have to do if God appoints me a judge just sitting on, you know, to judge the 12 tribes of Israel or something. But I'm going to be a nice judge. I don't believe in capital punishment. I believe anybody that would premeditatedly kill somebody um, uh, is sick in the head, okay, period. That, that nobody in their right mind would do such a thing. So there's a whole laundry list of reasons, uh, that logical reasons, I don't believe in capital punishment. China believes in it strongly, 5,000 executions a year, mobile uh, organ harvesting vans. So whatever China is, I want to do the absolute diametric opposite, okay? And in this case, that means zero executions. So yeah, I would like zero executions. And you might get the wrong guy. I mean, it's on your head. And, you know, I talk about being the watchman on the wall, and I, I don't want anybody's blood on my hands or head. So I've got a selfish motive for doing what I do to try to educate people. I really do. I mean, people got to get it. You know, you've got to be able to answer to future generations that you just went along to get along. And, you know, you just said, oh, this wealth imbalance and disparity that keeps growing and growing. I guess, you know, I just have to learn to accept it. And you better learn the sooner you learn and jump on the bandwagon of accepting and conforming and complying to this. Mad dog, social Darwinian, dog eat dog, cutthroat, rat race system. Okay, that isn't capitalism. It's antithetical to all that it, capitalism brings us. Capitalism brings us more wealth balance, prosperity across the board. Okay, that's what it brings. That's progress. Your currency gradually goes up in worth as we find easier and easier methods to produce not only the things we absolutely need, but the things we want. And remember, we own all this stuff because it's an accumulation of wealth over the ages. And who gave us the wherewithal to create this industrial age and all this technology and wherewithal? God gave us the wherewithal. So it all belongs rightfully to God, logically, intellectually, it all belongs to God. You understand? So the system would work perfectly without any form of money at all. Full prosperity, all of us having whatever we want, you know, and what Victor Hugo said would have no relevance anymore because it's just your lot. You're just born rich and, you know, you're either going to be a lazy slob and nobody's going to like you or you're going to get out and you're going you're gonna to perform, you're going to produce, you're going to give back. That's what you want to do. God gave you that instinct. And until somebody proves me wrong, and shows me that that system can't work, which they can't do. There's no time in history where that has ever been the paradigm on earth. But that day is coming. That is the day the Bible talks about when the captives are set free. You see, we're all held captives by the money masters of misery, these satanic minions. That's what they are. These are the people that don't value their conscience. Okay? They have a huge advantage over those that do. Can you see that right off the bat on its face? Do you see the huge advantage they have? They don't care. 
These are wanton genocidal maniacs. Look at the Georgia Guidestones, this new Ten Commandments they've got set up that sounds so benevolent and altruistic. But then you read deeper, and this is once they get the earth down to 500 million people from its current seven plus, seven and a half billion plus people on the planet. So we're talking about well over 90% as far as, you know, math off the top of my head. It's a huge number of people they want to get rid of to have their utopia, to have their paradise. So, you know, this is the, these are the monsters we're up against. So tell me if that is not, uh, you know, a, 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 an, an opportunity to really be honest and square with ourselves and with each other and really try to convey the gravity of the situation we're in here. And we've got to really put our feet down collectively and individually against tyranny. And we've got to know how we're being tyrannized. And I, the vast majority of people don't. And I start talking to people, and it's so easy for people, I, I sense right away, they put their defenses up because they think I'm trying to talk over their heads, and they're not in the mood to get their head hurt. They don't want to think. They don't want to deal with it. They want to prescribe to the ignorance is bliss. They heard it. Sounds about right. It got me out of a lot of jams before where people were trying to make me think, okay? So I see it all the time. It's not easy to talk to people, but you got to keep trying it. Ask God for the words, the tact, the spirit, the attitude to get it, to convey it. And make it palatable so people can't run away from it anymore, where they're willing to engage in a conversation about these things. But we need to discuss them. Everybody needs to be able to understand rudimentary, basic economic principles. If you're going to start talking about capitalism and you're going to vaunt it and, and, and just you know sing the praises of capitalism, then you've got to be honest about what capitalism brings. Okay, which is the opposite of crony capitalism. Crony capitalism has brought us this soaring poverty and des financial desperation in America and this great, greater and greater ever-growing wealth and in income imbalance, disparity. That's what anti-capitalism has done. That's what crony capitalism is. This is how they're creating all the mad dog socialists and communists out there. Don't play stupid. Don't play stupid. And Alex Jones, man, you, you know, prosperity is good for you. You like your millions of bucks, and I get it. That's fine. But listen, man, I mean, when you start wanting to say that how, you know, this has turned us all into, you know, all this prosperity has made all these monsters, you know, you make reference to this and how, you know, what it's done to us. We're a bunch of spoiled, entitled brats. That's what all these people are. They want their food stamps or they want their welfare. Who allowed the system to be busted up? The government. Are you part of the government, Alex Jones? Do you pay your taxes? Then I think you are part of the government. We're all part of the government. We, the people, are the government. Let's be honest and responsible. But our government, the official government, has gone rogue. I'm talking about the politicians and their constituents down to the Chamber of Communists. That's fascist. They're colluding with special interests, groups of special interest groups, private special interest groups. Okay, that profit and benefit from raising your cost of living tax. Okay, that's how this thing works. And that's not capitalism. And that's not progress. Okay, and that induces communists. Be honest and division. Do you understand? And how are you going to reach those people? You, are you ever explaining crony capitalism to people? And how its effects are opposite of, of true capitalism? What the effects of true capitalism are? Do you understand? True capitalism would eventually set the captives free. Okay, our currency, the few bucks we have would be worth so much, we just don't care anymore. Money loses its relevance. Satan loses its power. But do you think these people, these Satanists, witting and unwitting, these minions of Lucifer and Satan, some of them are open Satanists and devil worshipers, Luciferians. Okay, do you think that's what these people want? you think they want to lose their relevance? I don't think so. I mean, no, that's a stupid thing to say. Of course they don't. So they're going to fight tooth and nail. And this is where we're at in history. And we need God. And the lucky ones know they need God. I'm telling you straight up, I need God. For me to have any hope and to cope with this world, I've got it. I'm so thankful that I, every day, can choose to be a good American. And what I mean by that is to be a good egalitarian. Okay. Anti-elitist. Okay. I don't tolerate elitism. I, 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 it, it's like tolerating evil men. The Bible makes reference of guys like me, but I cannot tolerate it. And I'm sorry if, if somebody says, well, then I'm not going to tolerate That's too bad. I mean, that's fine. 
Okay, I'm not a threat to my enemies. I'm not going to seek them out offensively and go and harm them. I don't even want to confront them one on one. I I I can be very intimidating and, and arrogant and self righteous, and I hate that quality. And I'm trying to move away from that. But it's hard to not feel like excoriating people and saying, you know, are, you don't believe this stuff. You're just trying to deceive people. You you don't believe this is true capitalism. Come on, let's talk about it. Let, let, let's lay our cards on the table here. Okay, what's supposed to happen here? What is every nation's single greatest asset, according to Adam Smith in his book, The Wealth of Nations? Let's talk about the logic behind that statement and understand that even if everybody was born rich, labor is going to keep doing its thing. Okay, that's what we do. We innovate. We invent. It's playful. It's what we want to do. We recreate. We, we recreate. We procreate. We do stuff like our creator, the image and likeness of who we were created under, male and female. And that's it. We just have a good time. We'd be going and doing what we want to do with a bounce in our step, a song on our lips and, and joy in our heart and just having fun and frolicking on God's green earth like he wants us to do and loving one another, living together in peace and harmony and contentment, safety and security and prosperity and freedom. And therefore, we're going to be happy. OK, but we can't have anybody there oppressing us. We can't have you understand is you've got to be very clear in order to go to that place. You've got to be feel worthy and deserving in your own heart. You've got to open your heart up like a book to God, your mind and your spirit and say, I want if that's what you want, God, then that's what I want. Help me every day to cultivate uh, an understanding of how that could work for humanity, how we can have no money at all, but have full prosperity. That's it. everything's sitting there. Take what you need. Don't take what you don't need. It's there. It's not going away. There's more and more of it. Okay. We can all have, you know, nice sailboats and ships. We can have flotillas waiting to be sailed. Uh, we can do the same with the planes. It's already like that. Look at the airports out there. <laughs> Whatever you want, any car you want to drive. Okay. We can have a lot of, we, uh, uh, museums, okay, because there's one-of-a-kind stuff, so I understand the implications of one-of-a-kind and historical uh, artifacts and that sort of thing. So, you know, that's, that's to be taken into account. But we can have a world that is perfect down to the smallest details because God is the one that will allow us to do it. If we can cut through the crap and just understand how roundly we've all been duped by our training, to accept this onerous tax called the cost of living. And what's worse, to accept it ever growing. The burden's ever growing. It's like the problem, sorry, it's just getting worse. It's Zimbabwe in slow motion. And that was a point I was making earlier about Zimbabwe. So I don't see that as any better. It's like the band aid an analogy. I mean, just yank the damn thing off, okay? Like I like to joke, you know, you go to the bank and you make a deposit, you get cash back, and I'll say, you know, you guys have your own money printing press back there and they giggle. Oh, no, we don't, you know, because they know I'm just joking around. But they say, hey, if I had my way, we'd all have our own government approved money printing presses that would level the field overnight. You understand how, how that would work? So, yeah, you want to play games. Let's play hardball. Let's get crazy. OK, let's get honest. Basically, that's all I'm saying. Is let's get honest. OK, and I'm telling you, this scene is for the birds. It's for the birds. And I'm going to preach against this world. I hate my life in this world, but I love life. I enjoy life to its fullest. I sleep well. I laugh heartily. I get a lot of satisfaction in life. I love to be a man. I love my lot. I've had a very good life, and I'm still having a very good life. I've got a lot of, lot of hope, a lot of potential, a lot of dreams I want to explore. And uh, I've got a lot to contribute to society and humanity whereby you'd say, yeah, all right, right on. That, you know, that's a blessing. Whoever thought of that, that's a good idea. I like that. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I want to contribute a lot. It's not easy because, you know, being somebody that, uh, you know, thinks of ideas and designs and innovates, okay, uh, invent whatever you want to call it is not always good at selling and not always good at implementing, okay? But you have to kind of force yourself to be. You know, it's like Max Kaiser. I mean, he made it big, but he made a bunch of money in the stock market, and then he started this Hollywood Stock Exchange and made a small fortune, I guess, and has invested pretty wisely over the years. So he's doing pretty good. And, uh, you know, so you know, it can be done. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, I am turned off by the system. I could never do the Wall Street thing and make money like that. Uh, just a lot of jobs. That's financial services industry. I mean, 25% of Americans are involved in it, I know. Uh, I, it just, uh, you know, I could convince an investor. That might be possible. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to pursue my dreams and try to get some stuff out there that, uh, you know, but I got to take it one day at a time, God willing. And, you know, and keep this money thing in perspective because this idea that, you know, I stand and make a lot of money is not what's going to.